All right, I am delighted and thrilled to be here in Finland. Um, I am the, as I, as I said here, the co chair of Health 2.0. You can follow me at, at Balti Boy. And I was thinking very carefully today what I should wear because, you know, when you're on stage, it doesn't matter what you sound like, so long as you look really good, it's tremendously important. And uh, the great news is I had a lot of help from Packer in my dress choice today. So, what was I thinking about when I was on the plane? I really wanted to be in Finland, and now I am in Finland. So we go. <laughs> Woo! Th this is actually my first day in Finland. I arrived at midnight last night. Okay. <laughs> so um, Health 2.0 uh, is, you can follow us on uh, Twitter at Health2Con. I'm Baldy Boy. And just so those of you who don't know, and many of you I know came to Santa Clara, uh, we started our conference back in 2007. In fact, Steve Crime, my friend at the back, was one of the first presenters with Organized Wisdom, now a Startup Health, which has its own great announcement with SimPro today. It's a pretty big conference now, a couple of thousand people focusing entirely on digital health. Lots and lots and lots of live product demos, um, sponsors uh, and exhibitors. We're also global now. We just finished last week in Japan. So this is emblematic. We are not the cause. We are a symptom of a global movement of digital healthcare. These are places in the world where we have chapters. Um, just as some examples of where our chapters are, you can find out at health2con.chapters. Um, and here's a database that we have of all the technology, different companies in different parts of the world. We're trying to capture everybody. I know that we have several hundred companies in China we've missed because I was lectured about it by our Chinese colleagues the other day. Um, so across the globe, there are at least 100,000 plus people deeply involved in digital health, at least 4,000 companies, probably many more, and many more products. So we are now in a global movement. This is a little chart that we put up. This is not a map of the world. This is a map of the different types of technologies. On the right-hand side there, you see the rebel alliance of new provider technologies. On the left-hand side, you see the frontier of patient empowerment technologies. Up above them are the big empires. On the left-hand side, old world healthcare still run on paper. On the right-hand side, the empire of enterprise health IT, which companies and uh, technologies using uh, the new world of technologies invented in this century are going to be slowly overcoming. Give me a sense of some of these companies in our database. About half are consumer facing, about half are professional facing, um, or are doing professional provider communication. And many of the others are doing data analytics using big data. And these types of activities are combining. You can further break it down. We break it down by 19 segments. There are different ways of doing it. And you can see there's a lot of different activ activities amongst actual products, not just companies, but there are many companies have more than one product in each segment. And we have a very large segment, things like self-management tools and trackers. I'm wearing the Withers Withings watch. Many of you others are wearing those too. And then down at the bottom, a lot of companies working in that last category of uh, decision support analytics. Across the globe, you're seeing a variety of companies. Now, these data aren't quite right, because I know we are still missing some data. But most of the activities in the US, and I'm going to talk about some different places, some different activities in different places, a decent amount of activity in Europe. Um, and then you're starting to see slow growth in Asia and also in Latin America. This is where the, the, the companies are situated. So that implies something you all know, which is that most uh, technology innovation is happening in the US. We're also seeing in the US some significant IPOs. Um, Fitbit, obviously, is the biggest name here. IPO this year now has a market cap of approaching 8 billion. But also other technology types, such as Teladoc in telehealth, or Evolent Health, which is supporting providers, provider organizations, to understand the new world, another technology company like that. Uh, but it's not just IPOs that we care about. There's also significant acquisitions on both the consumer side and the data side, companies like Under Armour acquiring many companies, including MyFitnessPal, uh, its German competitor, Adidas, acquiring Runtastic from Austria. Uh, companies like Qualcomm acquiring the French company Qualcomm uh, Capsule, which does uh, data integration between devices in the hospital the way that Qualcomm does it outside the hospital. And of course, our friends at IBM who are buying virtually everything that moves in the healthcare sector and data analytics. Okay. 
Uh, here's some data uh, on annual funding. You can see that the, there are various people who follow this data. We do Mercom, Rock Health, uh, Startup Health. We all have slightly different numbers, but we all agree that the direction is going upwards. Venture funding across the globe is going up dramatically, and we think our forecast for this year it's actually going to exceed last year's, which is already a doubling of the year before. So a lot of innovation, a lot of activity. But the money is only part of the deal, right? A lot of what's going on is in terms of pilots and partnerships, and how do we get this stuff into the system? Uh, we do this, Health 2.0 works on this. Uh, we're working both with ONC, H part of HHS, and New York City, uh, Pilot Health Tech in New York City. Um, just to give you a sense, uh, there on the far right is New York City, in case you didn't know where it was. <laughs> but we're also doing this across the US. Here's a bunch of different partnerships that we have uh, managed a process where ONC, the US government, is funding not only large uh, hospitals like Boston Children's to w work with Gecko Health, but also if you look down there in Texas, right at the bottom of the map, um, uh, a, a tiny company called MyCare Communicator is working with a rural clinic called an MHP Salud. So you're seeing a lot of activity, and of course there are more than 30 projects in New York City alone. And this is just our work. There are many other uh, players uh, developing integrations in the US and elsewhere between uh, established healthcare organizations and the small startups that need to get their data, need to get customers, and need to get va validation. So this is a very necessary function that we're bringing together, and there are many others doing this as well. So it's great to see. Okay, um, other players in this, uh, drug companies, this is Bayer, Grant for Apps, they're now in, in Berlin, they are in uh, Barcelona, and they're actually thinking about coming to Tokyo. So just one example of another large corporation trying to help work, uh, develop with small corporations. And of course, Vertical itself is emblematic of that with all the support that Pecco has engendered. I want to announce, this is a new, a new announcement that is happening tomorrow morning, officially, in the engine, uh, in the engine room stage at Slush, I think at 11 o'clock. You'll see our, our new colleagues at IFC, which is part of the World Bank, they're announcing an entire program taking new technology companies initially from uh, across the world. Anybody can apply for this. It's called Tech Emerge. You can find it at techemerge.org. I encourage you to apply. Again, free money to take your uh, technology in initially to India, but also later to other emerging markets. So that's something that we're working on with them. So that's something we're very excited on. So I want you to think about, as a, as a, uh, for, for the way this works, an entire ecosystem of partnerships between and pilots between small technology companies and large organizations facilitated by a number of organizations, including Health 2.0, but also Startup Health and, and many others. All right, I want to end my remarks briefly with thinking about why does this place happen? Why does this technology impact happen in some places more than others? I was just in Japan. They're very concerned about their lack of innovation. There are some real hotspots, okay? First one, quite an obvious one. Uh, we know the nation of Israel is often called startup nation. Um, there are significant companies like DB Motion and American Well that have basically come out of Israel. Here are three examples of companies that we've had at Health 2.0 very recently out of Israel. Trito, which is a tool for uh, uh, looking at you know, personal examinations to attach to virtual visits. Metasafe, which is a very innovative company that won our traction contest last year and has since raised about $8 million uh, in the compliance management stake. And Trito, which is a data analytics company that looks at text and produces information out of that about pharmaceutical side effects. It looks at all kinds of text that the patients have put into the, uh, the system. So just three examples of, very, uh, of, a, of, a, of a country that's sort of punching above its weight, partly because it's got such a great startup culture, great connection to universities, and great connections, of course, to, uh, to uh, medical centers in the, uh, I in the US, because that close relationship between Israel and the US. So that's one reason why you might, uh, might, might have so much innovation. Uh, another country, one you're very familiar with, the one we're sitting in right now, Finland. Uh, I just picked three of the many Finnish companies um, that, we've, that we've seen featured. Bedit in the consumer space. Now you can buy this in American department stores like Bed Bath & Beyond. Uh, Nuna, um, Yanni from Nuna will be on the stage with, with me and Steve on uh, Thursday. Really innovative way to do artificial intelligence to capture information from cancer. And uh, Nelly, who I don't know if you said today, Nelly from uh, Latimekan, I could always get a name wrong, from UAP. Uh, they have a deal with Jamie Oliver, and they're now in the 500 Startups program, uh, which is a sort of uh, micro-change um, app for, for, for Vince. And again, I think it's a combination of what have you got here. You have Nokia and all the people coming out of Nokia. Um, you've also got, obviously, uh, TechS, etc. You've got funding. 
And then you've got real focus and ambition. I think that, that's great. And of course, vertical is now, now going to be a big part of that. And then finally, I want to say a little thing about whether we really need to get this stuff to people who really need it, not just across the developing world, but also in the, in the developed world, but also in the developing world. Here's a charity that launched at Health 2.0, uh, Healthy Villages, which is doing pretty simple stuff. It's giving old iPads and old uh, Android phones to villages, in, to, to health centers in Kenya, Haiti, and elsewhere. Um, and it's helped really educate uh, pa patients there, especially about the value of getting into a clinic and hospital for childbirth. And as you've seen the infant mortality rate in some villages in Kenya fall dramatically. So really, simple digital health technology is saving lives. Um, here's someone, this is out of New York City, Smart Vision Lab, but we're working in Haiti, again, turning a, a, a cell phone into a way that people can, can get uh, eye exams very cheaply and easily. Same thing true with a company out of MIT at Boston, iNetra, creating a system whereby villages in India can not only uh, uh, get um, access to better eye exams and cheap glasses, but also can actually, um, uh, you, they're setting up local health workers as entrepreneurs. They can, they can sell this. And the final example, one again, this company out of Israel, uh, a CEO from New York, called Mobile ODT. This is for cervical cancer screening. Very commonly done in the third world, very, uh, very ineffectively done. But again, this type of tool can be given to a mobile uh, a health worker, community health worker in Kenya or somewhere like that. Um, she can do a nurse. She can do cancer uh, cervical cancer screenings and go, and, and not only send the results, send the data off to be uh, analysed and get more accurate results. She can also take payment on this and become an entrepreneur, a fundable entrepreneur. So we're seeing tremendous, tremendous ch changes. Um, and very valuable care done. Okay, let me very quickly wrap. Again, I'll show you who, then I'll tell that again. What we're doing next, we have a big conference called Windertech coming up in January digi in digital uh, uh, health investing um, in JP Morgan Week in San Francisco. We have a conference for uh, developers and designers in Boston called HX Refactored in April of 56 in Boston. Um, and then two more, one, one you should know about Health 2.0 Europe is in Barcelona, uh, May the 10th to the 12th. And then finally, we hope to see many of you back. This will be our 10th ever Health 2.0 uh, coming up 2016, September the 26th to the 28th. We had, I think, 80 fins last time. Hopefully, we can get 100. Love to see more of you.